you see yourself, Frank, as competition to the WEF in Davos? Well, we are not uh, benchmarking ourselves. We are concentrating on our own development. Definitely, we've got a be better weather. Uh, our <laughs> meeting is held in Cascais in Portugal, a seaside resort close to Lisbon. And our mission is to inspire the future. We are hosting our Horasis Global Meeting pretty soon in 10 days' time in early May in Cascais. We have around 600 CEOs from all around the world, several head of governments and key ministers, and would like to jointly shape the future. You're covering some pretty big themes, aren't you, Frank? Sustainable development, modelling sustainable migration, blockchain, closing the gender gap, digital future, embracing AI. It comes amid an interesting geopolitical backdrop, doesn't it? You know, the current state of the world is quite gloomy, and I would say that the world... Um, is really, you know, getting more and more complex and ultimately maybe uh, even out of balance and out of order. We see several crises, uh, definitely uh, the crisis in the Middle East, uh, the rise of populism in the West and the demise of globalization in, in general. Maybe even the lack of leadership and a crisis of leadership. Mm. I believe that many of our leaders are not playing according to the rules anymore. Think about trade, uh, think about protectionism and the current strikes in Syria. At our meeting, we would like to bring everybody back and say, you know, we need a multilateral world, we have to join hands, we have to join to inspire the future. Yeah, do you think Macron can inspire President Trump? He's in Washington, we've seen the pictures today, Frank. Do you think he can inspire President Trump to remain on the, the multilateral rather than the unilateral approach? I'm quite confident that Macron will have some result at the end of the day and maybe a compromise. Mm. Uh, of course, you can't really change uh, President Trump uh, in a day, but uh, tr uh, um, Macron himself is really a figure of flight. He's a new leader in Europe, and if it's not him, I think nobody will be able to have an impact uh, on Trump. They will definitely talk about the deal uh, in Iran, they talk about climate change and about trade. Mm. And I believe we have, uh, will see a, a compromise at the end. He wasn't the able, though, to twist Trump's arm on the Paris Accord, though, was he? So some posing the question, if he can't twist his arm on the Paris Accord, how can he twist Trump's arm on Iran and trade, you know, the two big issues? I think on trade, uh, we'll see a compromise, uh, mm. definitely. And uh, it will start with China. The Chinese already made some concessions. Uh, in China now, it's possible to uh, go for 100% investment, no longer for joint ventures like in the manufacturing sector. And uh, so the Chinese, uh, you know, are really the, the new force of globalization, if you will. They are playing according to the rules. And we have to show the Americans that they have to come back to the club. And Macron is the best person to do that. What does your community think about China? Because with China's reaching out to the world, we had a story yesterday on how it's snapping up tens and tens of European businesses over the last decade or so. I can't remember the exact number. And there are some worries that China's reach is going too far. What does your business community say about China's reach out into the world? Our uh, Horace's Visions community is quite um, uh, convinced that China is a new force of globalization, mm. the new engine of globalization. Think about the One Bell, One Road, the new Silk Road, and bringing uh, money into Central Asia and into Eastern Europe like a new Marshall Plan. Mm. So I think it's a good thing. And we have to join hands with the Chinese and help the Chinese. Uh, there's definitely, you know, some risk and maybe some fear that Chinese will take away technology and, and you know, snap uh, good assets in Europe. Mm. But likewise, uh, European American companies will be able to do so in China as well. So I think it's a win-win for everybody. What does your community think about the European backdrop? We had a 10-year high growth rate within the Eurozone last year. It seems to just be coming off the boil we're certainly over the crisis talk, aren't we? The European sovereign debt crisis era. Are business leaders encouraged about the future of Europe when it comes to further integration and the growth prospects? I think, you know, the, the Brexit and even protectionism in the US is a bit of a um, blessing in disguise for Europe. Uh, Europe is um, trying to re-engineer itself and try to, you know, rethink its goals. Is, um, is vision for the future. Uh, on the business side, um, countries like Portugal are doing very well, Spain is doing very well. Um, I think we will continue in this mood, but maybe on the mid and long term, uh, maybe another crisis. Uh, I believe in the future we see many more crises happening 
in the past we had a crisis every 30 years, maybe now every seven, eight Some years. Some say it takes a crisis to, for true reform to happen. Do right. we have to wait for the next crisis for maybe the next batch of integration in Europe to take place or other necessary reforms? I think Europe is well prepared now and of course it's nothing is perfect if you wish mm. uh, but I think this time uh, it's not so easy to enter uh, a crisis uh, again as we did uh, uh, you know uh, 10 years ago. Uh, the banking sector is, uh, uh, is uh, like on the right way and uh, real estate of course the main source in Spain and Portugal uh, but, uh, you know, my main concern really is trade and yes. uh, what's happening in Washington, D.C. The Harassis Global Meeting, May 5th to May the 8th, inspiring our future. What excites you most, Frank, about this year's <laughs> gathering? <laughs> I think the, the optimism uh, we feel. Uh, you mentioned before sessions on technology, on AI, on Internet of Things. We see a lot of uh, entrepreneurs coming from all around the world talking about um, the impact of technology and how we can use technology to reduce poverty. We got also a lot of uh, African business leaders. We got two African head of states joining. Mm. And Africa really is uh, the, the continent of hope. And maybe the new China, you know, happening now in Africa. And uh, we want to make this happen. We want to jointly shape the future.